Cacton Talk of the Day. Sunday, the 17th day of September, 6.49 Central Daylight Savings Time. You know, you hear this term select digging used with metal detectors. And, you know, people like to find gel rings, you know, and they like to find high conductive coins. Select digging is usually, I guess, when it's talked about, it's you're picking and choosing your targets based on ID, maybe. And some machines, even on standalone targets, do a better job at this. You know, the E-Track and the CTX were two very good machines for select digging on solo setting high conductive targets deeper even. Okay. Well the CTX and the E-Track, you know, they they have a disadvantage though to the old manicure. Now what I'm gonna show you can be used with some other machines, but the fine folks at Mind Lab, you know, they set up and I've got this Mind Lab out now. This is this is a stock call you're gonna see. I may show some video with a small call. So select digging. Well, you get to take your detector when you go into a site. Let's say you're going into a polluted site. A lot of modern trash. It's had, you know, a lot of human movement. Walkways, parks, sidewalks, things like that, you know, and you're you know, there's there's a thread over there on friendly forum talking about small calls and stock calls and blended signals well yeah blended signals yeah those are the tough ones huh but you can expose some of those and what I what we'll call this is you're detecting in the unknown but since you know how your behavior, uh, detector behaves, you take advantage. Okay, so I'm going to give you a couple of demonstrations here. Okay, now the Mind Lab folks with this update, I'm trying to remember. I don't know if it had the favorites mode feature on the original version or not, but this latest update does. So what I have done, and I'll show everybody here. You go up here to general settings and you come down soft keys and you go over and you get to set up your keys. Well, see, I've got my bottom right key. See it there with that star on it? says favorite mode. Well, what I've done is I've set up my favorite key with all terrain low conductors. See, now I'm in the all terrain high conductors with one push of that button. Since I'm right-handed, I set that button up right there. Look at that. Now I'm in all-terrain low conductors with a push of a button, which can be pre-noise cancel, can be pre-ground balance. Okay? Okay, so now I'm back over here in all-terrain high conductors. Now, <clears throat> if you're going to do what I'm giving you a tip on doing here, you don't have to run notch in your all-terrain, what we're... What I'm going to classify as my hunt program is all-terrain high conductor. You don't have to run notch in it, but let's say you decide, well, I'm going to go out to a site. But I've done one in there and cherry-picked it out with a E-Track, CTX, even this Manicore in all-terrain high conductors. You went in there and you cherry-picked it. Maybe you went in there and you tried to just dig the silvers and the coppers. So you get to take your hunt program and you get to decide how low you want to go, ID-wise, to inspect targets. Okay, so you could literally set this machine up, for example, and say, well, I'm going to set my notch. I'm going to notch all the way from zero all the way to 60 in my hunt program, all-terrain high conductors. 
and take all of the notch out of your all-terrain low conductors. That's your check program. Well, I'm not going to put any notch in this. It, it doesn't have any, and neither does the all-terrain low conductors. But for this exercise, you'll probably see what I'm talking about. Okay. Now, also remember this. Multi-frequency machines are getting more and more popular. Okay? So I could make a case, for example. See that big old honker go ring down there in that foil there? I can make a case that some folks using multi-frequency machines, depending on what mode they're using, they could hit a scenario similar to that right there and not see a target that they would be deeming the goal ring range and walk right by it. Okay? Whereas, if you'll do what I'm going to show you in this video, you will be able to determine and place high odds on low conductive target masking. Okay, so I'm going to show you here. Okay, so now I'm in the, uh, this is my hunt program, and I'm going to sweep across this. You see the ID? There's 39. Okay, well, so you, so let's say you went into a site, you know, and you're looking for, I don't know, you're looking for gold rings. Well, maybe you'll take your all-terrain high conductor program and you'll set your, you know, you'll set your notch down lower versus looking for maybe some mask higher conductor. So we swap across this in all-terrain high conductor, and you see that. So all I do is push the button. Now I sweep across. Look what happens. All right. And we come over here. We're back in our hunt program again. See that? Now I mash the button. Look what I get. So if I seen that in the wild, that would tell me. Now remember, that gold ring down there could be... A junk higher conductor, too. So it's not, you know, this is not a guarantee you're fixing to dig a gold ring. But that scenario there suggests when you do it with this detector, it's so convenient the way you can set this up, that there's probably some masking going on there. Okay? And so you might take a shot at digging it. All right, now we're going to come over here to this other scenario. And believe it or not, this has happened to me twice in my detecting career. Look at there. That old mercury dime is there, ain't it? Look at there. And what I have done, there's a nickel. But the dime is more or less, it's in basically the same as we look straight down. It's on top of that nickel. Okay, so now I'm back over here in my hunt program, all-terrain high conduct. Now I'm going to sweep this call from even from substantial height. So this could be in the ground seven or eight inches even, maybe even nine inches. See what I've got in a meter? So let's say I've went out to a site and I've decided, oh, okay, so I'm gonna set my notch to 55. And an all-terrain high conductor, when this machine triggers anything that reads over 55, I'm going to have a look-see. Okay, well, here's one right here you would get in the wild. You come up with that. Look, I got that call way up in there. You see that? So I would say, hmm, well, let's check that. Hit the star of top right key. Look what happened. Look. See what happened? So that would automatically sort of indicate, uh-oh, low conductor masking high conductor. There's mixed conductivity targets there, one being higher, one being lower. Now, we could even reverse this. You know, a lot of people dig nickel signals. Well, the nickel there is up there. See it there? I'm just going to leave them just like that right there. And I'll even separate them. Say it's a coin spill. That could be an old nickel even. Okay? So now I'm back in my hunt program. I'll train high conductors. See what I've got? Well, that's not a cooling signal. That's reading too high for a nickel and too low to be a silver dime. I hit my hunt program button. Look what happened. See the disparity in the ID? So when targets 
when you cherry pick out a side or it's been in there and you had people, other people in there, you know, and maybe they are not as knowledgeable and they haven't done this. So the signal's left in a sight, chances are is what? I have something wrong with them. But this is very convenient right here. Okay, you see that big dollar sign on the right side of that little building there? Well, that's pretty simple to see. You see that one, you know you're in your hunt program. Now, you can hunt and go the other way with this machine even if you wanted to. You could hunt in all-terrain low conductors and run you a little bit of notch, okay? And then you would expect to see the, you know, if you got over a target and you hit that button there and it went higher, then you know, uh oh, we got some masking. Now you don't know what it is. We don't know. We don't know that's a nickel in the same hole with a dime. Now let's move these. Let's move these over. Look at there. See what we got? Let's just see what happens when we come from substantial call high. There's probably, I don't know, seven inches. I'm in my hunt program. So I'm getting 36, 40. Now I'm back in altering low conductors. Look at there, what happened? Let's come over here. Back to the hunt program, altering high conductors. All right. Now I'm back in the altering low. Look at that, 10 points difference. Those coins are close together. I've got this old big 11 inch call on this detector. Okay. Now the small call you can do this with too. You know, and that's some of the benefit in situations with a small call. You could sniff out something maybe like that right there. Okay. But you can also sniff it out with this right here. You ain't got a small call. Okay, so you know you can make a game of this is what I'm saying. You can go out to a site that you, even if you've done been there, you can say, well, today I'm going to lower my notch in all-terrain high conductor, my hunt locate program. I'm going to lower it. Zinkins comes in at six. You can even lower this to zinc and pennies, by the way. You can just say, okay, I'm going to lower this thing to 63 or 62. So you're going to hear every zinc and penny signal that this machine, you know, can hit. Well, you would be checking those because a zinc and penny could be masking a high conductor as well. A silver ring, silver coin, a big copper coin. Okay. So I like this right here. I like that to be able to do that on the fly. X, you know, quick checker. Now you can do this with a day is two as well, but there's one small, it's, you can do it, okay? But for you day is two years later, this is actually one area where this machine may have a little bit of an advantage because the, the ID, the conductors on the scale, you know, different levels of conductors are spread out more. So on this machine, on something like that, you'll see a bigger spread on the ID when you compare these programs versus the DS2. You may see like a three-point spread on the DS2, and on this machine you might see, I don't know, seven or eight. Well, which one's easier for you to see, you know, when, you, when you're when you checking? I have hunted like that with the DS2, by the way, and made finds. This machine, this video, you know, it might help some people and give you something to think about. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed.